Okay, so right now I'm going to work on a barrel itself. And so you see that um, the shape itself is actually quite difficult to model. You actually have to do a Boolean operation to kind of get it. Or you can sub demol it, but it's, in my opinion, it's much easier to just do the way that I'm about to do. So um, add in a mesh and a cylinder. And in this case, I'll just put it at 24 sides. I'm going to just rotate it on the side and just scale it down to kind of match the overall size of this. So something like this. And I'll move it till around here. I'm going to scale it on the Y and just have it till here. Now apply all your transforms. Make sure that you select this face and do a control B to bevel and just turn on the segments till you get at least like some squarish um, faces and right click and merge by vertices. Okay, so this is what we're gonna use to cut out of this hole. And before we continue, I'm just gonna look for it and I'm gonna just pull this uh, one. And this one I will call two. Just so that I can easily find it later because we also need to keep these meshes for the low poly. I will add in a boolean modifier, put it before the bevel modifier. Well, I guess I can put it after. And I will select this. And you'll see that it'll do a cut, but right now the cut is too shallow. So I'm going to move it lower a bit and try to get some sort of nice shape for the first one. And also make sure that um, it is in the center of the gun. So I guess we messed up our origin a bit and you can always just go to object, set origin to center of mass. And now you can just put the X to zero. And if I were to hide it, pretty good. So yeah, something like this is pretty good. So now we also need to do the same thing we did on the barrels and array it around the barrel, around this part. So I'm gonna add in another empty and I'm going to just or maybe I can just move my 3d cursor to the center of the world and I'm going to just do a neat little trick where I use the 3d cursor as a pivot and I'm going to just go into the front view press shift e to duplicate and press r to rotate and I'm just going to hold control till I get it around 40 degrees well 45 degrees I'm going to left click to confirm it and I'm going to just hit shift r to repeat the action and it's going to just keep repeating until we've got the number of pieces that we want. Okay, so now if we were to just take a look at it, it's being boolean pretty well. Let me just also make sure that I move this part a bit forward, like so. And I will also make sure to shade smooth on this one. Because it actually affects the mesh at the bottom over here. Okay, give a subdivision to this. And let me just disable the boolean modifier first. I'll give a subdivision and make sure that it is before the boolean. I'm going to add in a bit of a loop cut. You're trying to have um, as many even geometry as you can so that your sculpting goes well. And I'll just give it two for now. And I think it should be good. Make sure the plier scale as well. So let me just take a look. Yep, it looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same for this and I'm going to make sure that I add in a few loop cuts over here and over here. And I guess I should have done it while I had one left. So I'm just going to use the knife tool with the shortcut K and press A to angle it and C to cut through so that it'll just cut through all of them. So I'm going to do the same for this. A to angle and C to cut through. And you should have some nice loops. And I'm going to just hit subdivide and two subdivisions good enough. And I'm going to just now just save my project because I'm afraid I'll mess it up. It does annoy me that these parts are a bit. So I'm just going to box select all of these and press I to inset it. And it should look a bit better. Okay. So now save your file and re, -re enable your boolean and it should work a bit better. Okay. So now just make sure you just press Shift D while you have both of these selected and just duplicate them. And I'm going to just move them to another collection and I'll call this um, revolving barrel. And we really need to make sure that we keep a copy of this to get our low poly. Okay, so I'm going to disable this 
So um, just make sure that you um, apply your subdivision on this one first. And for this one as well, just make sure to apply your bevel as well as your subdivision. And you can just hide your boolean first. So I will apply it. And now when I delete this, we'll have a pretty clean looking mesh, but we also need to have a bit of a bevel on it. So what I'll do is to just go into sculpt mode, press shift R, and I'm going to just inc increase my voxel remeshing size to something like this. So make sure you don't go too low. Something like 0 0.0025 worked for me, but just make sure you don't go too close to zero. And let me try remeshing. Okay, so it's pretty good. Now I'm gonna use um, the mesh filter and I'm gonna go to surface smooth and I'm gonna just drag to the right and you can see the mesh is like smoothing out a bit. And I'm gonna do another remesh and just smoothing it out like so. And now we have a pretty nice and clean mesh and we have our reference model that we will make a low poly out of as well. So now we're going to work on the handle itself. Okay, so I'm going to start working on the handle on the top. And you can definitely start by adding in a cylinder. And we're going to do a bit of sculpting this time. So I think um, 32 sides is more than enough. I'm going to rotate it by 90 and making sure that it fits around this part. So um, you can change your pivot back to the bounding box. And I'm going to just put it somewhere square between these two. And I'm going to move it here. Okay. So this can be our low poly. And what I'm going to do is to just apply all my transforms. Just going to shade smooth and turn on auto smooth. And now I'm going to hit shift T to duplicate it. So it stays in place. I'm going to hide one of them. And now this one will be our designated high poly. Now the way I made this is... um. I first just added in some edge loops, and I guess I can just add in a few right now, like so. And I'm going to just alt select and I'm going to use a skew and I'm going to just move some of them in one direction or the other, like so. Just a quick way to make them and definitely not the best way. You can always um, choose how you want to make them. I'm going to just like randomly skew them like this. Okay, so now we got a lot of random stuff going on. Okay, so now it's a bit more flesh. Okay, so I'm going to just going to alt select all of these. And I'm going to hit Shift-E to duplicate it. Right click so that it stays in place and press P and separate by selection. So that now this is a different object and I'm going to add a modifier and this one will be a solidify modifier like so. So now we got this thing going on. So something like this. And for this one, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to just alt, alt select these face loops, Shift-E, right click, and then press P and separate by selection. And these can also be their own um, solidifies. So this one, I'll just make it a bit thinner than the first one. And also I'll make sure that they have a bevel modifier on top. In this case, you don't need to uh, make sure to turn on auto smooth because we're going to subdivide it quite a lot. And I'm going to turn a bevel on this one as well. So something like this. We definitely need to make sure that's going out a bit more because you definitely have some space. So I'll hit Alt S while they're all selected and just cover it a bit better. And this one as well, I'm going to just add a bit more thickness. And maybe I can just turn down the offset a bit like so. We just don't want there to be like any empty spaces that they can jut out of. And now I'll just turn the bevel a bit lower like so. And this one I can get away with. Okay, so I'll subdivide it now. I think control one. Well, control two will be good enough. And same for this one. 
I'll just subdivide it quite a bit. And if I were to just look at the wireframe, it looks pretty dense. Okay. So now I'm going to go to object, convert to mesh, and same as this one, object, convert to mesh. So now we have these two pretty dense meshes. And now I can go into sculpt mode on one of them. So I'll just go into object mode and sculpt mode. And now you can press F to increase and decrease your burst size. And you can press shift S, F to um, increase or decrease the strength. And the only brush we're going to use is this draw sharp. And, and um, before we do, we also need to make sure that we remesh it to have way more topology. So I'll hit um, shift R and just, and just move it up a bit, maybe until like 0 0.0015. And I'll just press control R to remesh. Okay, like so. And now, if you were to just try to paint on it, you'll make a cool little little crease. And if you press Control and paint on it, you'll make a crease, but like in the opposite direction. So that's what I used for this one. And instead of um having to just get it perfectly, I'll just do a line stroke. So in your tool panel over here, go into your stroke and change it to line. So what it means is like you can just Draw a line and press control and draw another line and you will just make a bunch of strokes i'll just do the same for these ones and it's a pretty repetitive process so i'm probably going to time lapse this and it's fine if you don't get it right on your first try Okay, so the pi the high poly of this is pretty much done. Uh, just make sure to save your blend file. And I think in hindsight, I may have uh, miscounted how many um, holes there are on this barrel, but it's fine. I don't think it messes up the project too much. And just taking a look around. And the last thing is that you actually can model a strap if you want to. In this tutorial, I won't do it. And you can treat it like a homework if you want to because it wouldn't be too hard after modeling if you manage to model all of these. And I guess we're going to go into the, into the low poly phase. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.